Vigilante is a deceptively simple 2D brawler for the TurboGrafx-16. Being a launch title for the US release of the TurboGrafx, some of this simplicity can be expected. There's only one difficulty option, no multiplayer, and really no game options to speak of at all. There are only five stages, each of which may be completed in about 60 or 90 seconds. In addition, there's little in the way of enemy variety. When compared to contemporary games of the same genre, such as Double Dragon or the Ninja Turtle titles for the NES, Vigilante seems quite forgettable. This is because the game's overall goal is not to tell a story or to build an engrossing world. Rather, the intent of Vigilante is to provide a stripped-down arcade experience that rewards perfection and memorization. Vigilante can be thought of more as a speedrunner's game than a contemporary title whose progression and aesthetic elements build a narrative in the minds of the players. Each level is structured as a gauntlet of enemies, usually with a pair of nunchucks offered as a power-up halfway through, and concluded with a boss fight. The enemy gauntlet is meant to challenge the player's memorization skills, timing, and mastery of the controls. Enemies will flank the player from either side, fire projectiles, and threaten the player with different opponents whose optimal range may be set at a distance, up close, high attacks, or even low attacks. Some enemies take multiple hits, forcing the player to briefly focus on that single opponent, while others may only take one, acting more as cannon fodder and a distraction from the other threats. All these enemies used in concert force the player to change up their attacks between kicks, punches, low attacks, high attacks, and jumping attacks. This creates a sort of rhythm or choreographed set of actions to deal with the bad guys as the player makes their way to the stage boss. Any misstep results in a devastating amount of damage, with some enemies taking as much as half the player's life bar in a single hit. Once the player reaches the end boss, the game gets far less predictable. Each boss fight requires a different strategy to evade attacks, strike blows, and keep out of range of the boss's special moves. Possibly the most challenging part of each boss fight is the random likelihood of the boss to block an attack and take no damage. Each boss only has a small animation window in which the player's attack will land and deal damage. Any other time, the blow has no effect, and the player's timer continues to go down, and the boss will actually regain some health. This ends up putting the players back against the wall all during the fight. To run out of time would mean a loss of a life, and eventually a game over. And every time a boss heals, the player loses that much progress. Throughout every combat, the player must also be mindful of how many hits an enemy takes, as each attack burns a little precious time as its animation must play out. The end result is a good run through Vigilante consisting of precise attacks against the expected waves of enemies, and a little bit of luck against the boss villains, all while racing the clock. Vigilante also ends once the final boss is beaten. This means there's a finite amount of time the player may spend in the game. The game's full timer times the number of lives the player possesses. This creates an interesting dynamic where there's theoretically an optimal way to play through the game such that the maximum number of possible points are obtained by balancing meandering in the level fighting enemies with charging all the way to the end. This risk versus reward aspect is really Vigilante's arcade roots showing through. While the game's goal is not to tell a story, it does use some narrative devices to help build gameplay to a climax. Each stage is bookmarked with a single screen showing the protagonist's girlfriend in trouble. She's acting as a damsel in distress, motivating the player to continue on his run by increasing the danger she is currently experiencing. The completion of each level is not met with a congratulations, but rather with a reminder of the player's work still not being done and his primary problem not yet solved. The screens also act as a momentary lull from the action just experienced during the enemy gauntlet and the climactic boss fight. This creates an ebb and flow of tension that keeps the player from becoming fatigued by the game's continued challenge. The backgrounds of each stage also open up, becoming more sprawling and exotic as the player progresses through the game. The player starts in the city streets, moving onto a junkyard, then a major city bridge, and then some rough and tough back streets, with the finale being on the high floors of a skyscraper still under construction. This works to give the player a sense of travel and adventure as he navigates the city, searching for the damsel. This keeps the player from becoming bored, which is honestly necessary considering the enemies don't really change up between levels. The stakes also seem to be getting higher and higher as the player travels to more dangerous locations before his final confrontation with the evil gang's boss. This all ends up coming together as a game that wears its heart on its sleeve. There isn't much effort required to see the different moving parts of Vigilante. The game almost ends up becoming a framework of sorts for other games to build on because of this. The game doesn't serve to make a sophisticated social statement or challenge the player to reevaluate how they consume a game. Instead, it acts as an experiment in meshing different game mechanic elements with minimal narrative devices to create an engaging experience. The trade-offs to maintain this minimalist structure are apparent and commendable. Vigilante is a film short, meant to provide a brief interlude in your day and inspire others to make something bigger. It's interesting how small works like this must stay out of the spotlight if one is to prop up those greater derivative works yet to come. However, in doing so, it becomes lost in the historical narrative of the art form's progression. In that way, Vigilante seems humble and quaint. Not every game needs to be a blockbuster and ripple its influence years down the line. 
Sometimes it's okay for a work to just make a simple statement to get it and get out. Life has its ups and downs. This fluid change in fortune makes each positive experience all the more meaningful. In some ways, that's how I relate to this game experience. I will only have about 5-10 to 10 minutes with Vigilante before the game is over. No great life lessons learned, no major time investment necessary. It's instead decided to celebrate the present and live in the moment.